Hello and welcome, roommates. Yes, I'm playing another Winter Wolves game, sorry about that. Right, a few quick notes before we begin. Number one, uh, the main reason I'm playing this is because, well, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow and I'm still depressingly single, so I figured playing a dating sim would be kind of amusing. Number two, please be aware, this is the beta version of Roommate. See, version 0.8 over there. Uh, which means there may well be bugs or, and or glitches. Hopefully there shouldn't be anything game-breaking, but you never know. So, as per usual with Winter Wolves games, I have whacked the volume down, so hopefully I should be audible. Because that's always seems to be an issue with these games. So it's easy enough to fix. Right. So, let's see how well this goes. Now, play the game as this guy or this girl. Yeah, I'm going to do what I always do, to be honest. Incidentally, you can actually buy these two completely separately or get them both together for a slight discount. So, I actually did get both. So, I'll probably end up playing it through as him at some point in the future. Anne thinks that college would be the fresh start she needs to break out of her shell. Her goal is to make at least three new friends while keeping her grades up. God, she sounds interesting. Ah, college. A glorious new world filled to the brim with opportunities for education, community service, and networking. Oh, and also absolutely soul-shatteringly terrifying. The population of my hometown is around 5,000. Until now, the farthest I've been from my home is 10 miles, and that was to with my grandparents while our house was getting fumigated. I have a hard time looking strangers in the eye, let alone talking to them. You may wonder what a shy, small-town girl like me is doing at Liberty University third largest school in the state. I'm starting to wonder that myself. I thought I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, but this might be too much. As I walk down the street, I feel like everyone is staring at me. Okay, deep breaths, relax. Smile naturally when you make eye contact. It's only a short distance to the place I'll be staying for the rest of the year. <laughs> I'm living in, an, in a campus on house. It's a little more expensive, but most of my tuition is covered through scholarships anyway, and dorm living sounds loud and chaotic, the opposite of what I want. I think it'll be worth the investment. Are you Anne? A cute, well-dressed young man stands at the door of my house, holding a bundle of papers in his hands. This must be RA. Deep breaths. Y yes My name's Dominic. I'm the RA for Latin House. Hi, I'm Anne. Come on in, and have a seat. I'll start the orientation in a few minutes. Um, thank you. I'm trying not to think about how often I'm looking at the floor. Just another thing to work on this year. I'm about to step inside when... WHAM! I'm knocked to the ground by someone barreling past me. Whoops, sorry. She keeps running into the house. Hey, Isabel! Oh, I can't believe she just... He gives me a look of concern and holds out his hand. I'm so sorry, that was incredibly rude of her. Are you alright? Can you stand? I think so. I take his hand and try and stand up. I didn't twist my ankle, but that still kind of hurt. I'm having a hard time thinking of anything that would have justified running that fast, let alone not having time to stop and apologise. Is everyone in the house like that? Oh no, not at all. He hesitates. Well, everyone has their eccentricities, but they're not all like that, Isabella, I swear. I would have quite the gig ages ago. I would have quit the gig ages ago if they were. <laughs> he gives he gives me a reassuring smile. I want to make sure everyone here has good living experience, so if anything's bothering you, just come talk to me. Thank you, again. I'm glad there's at least one person here I can talk to. Dominic seems very kind. Finally, I enter the house I'll be calling home for the next year. The first floor is huge. I can immediately see there's an oversized couch facing a nice big TV screen. There's also some kind of breakfast nook with a big table, and an area with several bookshelves surrounding a bunch of comfortable looking chairs. I sit on the couch and take a book out of my purse. I love books of all flavours. At the moment I've got a rather promising fantasy novel to start. Before I can get far into the story though, Dominic comes back in, a young man with spiked, bright-dyed hair swaggering in after him. 
tall, handsome, bad boy vibe. The kind of boy my parents always warned me to stay away from, despite not actually having someone like him within a 70 mile radius. Even when they're standing next to each other, he and Dominic seem like they're from parallel worlds. Sup, I'm Max. Anne. Just as I thought, it's hard to look him in the eye. At least I maintained eye contact for a moment. Hey, no need to be shy. Anyone sitting here? Ahem. Why don't you take a seat over there? Dominic points to the opposite end of the couch. What? Why can't I sit next to her? It's better that you both have more space. Bull, you just want to have her all to yourself. Dominic slams a packet of papers in front of Max with surprising force. Here are the house rules. He walks over to me and hands me a packet as well, more delicately. I guess Max just irritates him. Let's go over them together. Anne, would you like to start? Oh, okay. Rule 1. There should be no consumption, storage or sale of alcoholic beverages or illegal drugs in the housing area. Nor shall any underage person in the housing area while under the influence of that's all before mentioned substances. Students found in violation of this regulation are subject to dismissal from the housing area and, re and remittance on use rent under terms of their contract. I have never touched a drop of liquor in my life. I shouldn't have to worry about this rule. 2. There should be no pets in or around the building. That's too bad. A hamster might have been nice. Oh well, I should probably concentrate on school anyway. I'll go next. 3. The sidewalk entries and stairwells of this building should not be obstructed or used for any other purpose than for entertaining and exiting the respective area of the house. No student shall interfere in any manner with any portion of the heating and lighting apparatus or fire protection equipment around the house. There will be no flammable materials or explosives stored in or around the housing area. Blatantly causing fire hazards? They only put that rule in after someone's done something that dumb. I'm really having second thoughts about this place. Now Max? Now Max what? Read the next two. Read the next two what? Read the next two rules, please. Well, since you asked so nice. Students shall not play musical equipment or instruments at such hours and at such volumes as to disturb other students in the dormitories. Well, that's good. Well, that's good. I hate when my sleep schedule gets interrupted. There will be no firearms or weapons permitted in or around the housing area. It is vital to Dominic that his iron-fisted rule of the populace of this household be lasting and eternal, such that any rebellion can be crushed within a moment's notice. Ha uh ha, -huh, very funny. Read it properly. Hey man, I'm just reading what's on the paper. I read rule number six. Oh wow, that is actually kind of amusing. I'll be right back. It's a Bella! Dominic drops everything and tears up the stairs with the speed of an angry bull. Isabella is in the Isabella that bumped into me earlier. She may have been rude, but I can't help but admire the sheer audacity it must have taken to edit the rule sheet right under Dominic's nose. I wish I could be half as fearless as that. Dominic left so fast he dropped our keys. Max stands up and tosses me by. I just managed to catch it. Well, I'm gonna bring in my gear and tour the rest of this place. You coming? Oh, let's explore with Max. Well, I did want to be more social. At the same time, I have no idea why he'd want me to come along when we're complete strangers. Why me? Well, I was just thinking it'd be easier if I introduced you to everyone, because you seem kind of shy. Really? What? I'm a nice guy. I can't help but laugh, though I immediately feel bad about it. Luckily, Max is grinning, so I don't think I really hurt his feelings. Okay. I'll choose to believe you. Huh? I mean, I'll come with you. Max now likes me slightly more. He shoots me a gratified grin. That's the spirit. Come meet me at my room once you're done unpacking, alright? Alright. I bring my luggage up to my room. I had no idea what to pack for a year away from home, so I brought as much as I could. That is a lot of books. And, and speaking of someone who's currently living in student accommodation, bloody hell, that's a lot of space. I am living in, in what is ostensibly a cupboard. 
Maybe American universities are just, you know, bigger. Anyway. <clears throat> All of my clothes, old notebooks, old scrapbooks, a microwave, my favourite tea mug, my favourite tea, my favourite tea strainer, an ironing board, my sewing machine, my sewing kit, my bin of yarn and knitting needles. The pillows I made in 6th grade, the needlepoint I made in 7th grade, pictures of my grandparents, parents and extended family, my laptop, my cell phone, charges for my laptop and cell phone and my 50 favourite books. Max saunters into my room. I must have taken longer to unpack than I thought. Whoa, restraint's really not your thing, is it? I suppose I might have overdone it a little. That's, that's fine. If one of them hoarding shows come by, I'll know which room to send them to. Hey, it's not that bad. Kidding, kidding. You ready? Sure, let's go. There's a sweet smell and some soft ambient music coming from the room next to mine. I wonder who lives here. I knock lightly on the door. No response. Come on, give it a little more force. But, look, we don't have all day. You can blame me if they get pissed. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I take a deep breath and give the door a louder knock. Hello? A pretty blonde girl peeks out from behind the door. What is this? The sanctuary house for the intensely attractive people? If so, what am I doing here? I'm beginning to feel somewhat insecure about my appearance, to say the least. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Was I disturbing you? <sighs> my grand's music is louder than that. No offense. The name's Max. I just moved in today. This is this is Anne. N nice to meet you. Oh, you must be my new neighbors. I was wondering if anyone was living in those empty rooms. I'm Sally. I just moved in this past Friday. It is really it is so nice to meet you. Um, thank you. Is that incense? Hmm? Oh, this is just for meditation purposes. The energy here has been so hectic that I feel there needs to be something tranquil to balance it out. Energy? Energy? Energy! You know, things like auras, spiritual forces, connecting everything in this world. Why, if there's too much of one kind of energy, then... Rakesh, get in here! Sally winces. Everything ripples outwards from there. I'm going to keep meditating. You're welcome to join me if you like. No, thank you. Maybe some other time? Sitting in a smoke-filled room with a complete stranger, even one who seems perfectly nice, is still far outside my comfort zone. Okay, I'll see you at dinner. She waves cheerfully before shutting the door. Max shrugs as the door closes, he looks towards the yelling noises and shrugs again. He gestures for me to take the lead. A few steps later, I turn my head and he's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Well, I've come too close now. I can hear them loudly talking anyway. It sounds like this will be interesting. Uh, oh, jeez. I walk further down the hall, following the sound of Isabella's outrage. The door to what I can only assume to be her room is half open. I go inside to see what the commotion's about. Isabella is glaring at a young man who's acting like he's made some very regrettable decisions. I hope the two of them don't fight. I've barely been in an hour. I'd hate to find out I've made a terrible mistake in living arrangements. Maybe it's not too late to get reassigned. Yet another good looker though. He looks as if he came straight off the cover of a romance novel. I can't believe you painted all over my dance pole! Oh, he's an exotic dancer and this house is secretly a strip club. What have I gotten myself into? I'm sorry, do you not like the colours? It has nothing to do with the colours. I can't exercise with all this fresh paint on here. But it looks more vibrant, yes? No! Well, maybe a little. But I'm still mad because you've asked before you went off and used my things in your art project. You wouldn't want me to take all your paintbrushes and tape them together and make a dance pole, would you? The guy thinks for a moment, then shakes his head. I would not mind if you did that. And there's the problem. There's such a thing as private property. What's all this about? Rakesh, Rakesh mixed with my exercise pole. So I see. And? You're the RA? Why don't you talk to him about it? Oh, I'd love to, Isabella, but I'm afraid that over-regulating things here would make me too much of an iron-fisted dictator. Seriously? I'm always serious. How else would I crush rebellions? Ugh, whatever. I'm gonna take a shower. Don't let the karma hit you on the way out. He spots me out of the corner of his eye. Oh, hi, Anne. 
I'm sorry about earlier, I shouldn't have left the halfway through the orientation. Did you find your way around okay? Oh, definitely. Please don't worry about me. Let me know if you need any help unpacking. I'd like to make it up to you somehow. I don't, but you know where I could donate some things? I brought way too much. Of course. I know there are some clothes and book swaps on campus. Just have to look at where they are. Dominic spends the next hour looking up dates, locations, and directions for various swap meets, along with directions to the nearest thrift stores in town. I've never had a guy so out of his way to help me, though I'm sure he's just doing his job as an RA. As I walk out of Dominic's room with a stack of helpful papers in my arms, I see the pole painting boy come out of Isabel's room, covered in considerably more paint smearage than before. Did he spend all that time cleaning up? Uh, hi. At least I was louder this time, if not by much. He turns to me and presses his hands together in what I can only assume is a respectful gesture. Namaste. You are new, yes? Y yes my, my name is Anne. I am Rakesh. It is good to meet you, Anne. Thank you. Do you always... I have no idea how to phrase it tactfully. Rakesh chills his head. Greet roommates? Have paint on? Oh no, I do, I do not always paint other people's belongings. Most of the time. Most of the time? Have you, had a, have, an, uh, have you ever had an idea so strong it takes over your thoughts? When I am inspired like that, everything is a canvas. I see. I see I may have to invest in a lock for my door. I'm trying to figure out how to tactfully ask Rakesh to leave my things alone when my stomach growls. I try not to let it show, but I'm suddenly very aware of the smell of food coming from the kitchen. Ah, it is time for dinner. Who's cooking? Usually it is me, but today it's Sally's turn. He doesn't look particularly happy about it. Is she a bad chef? No, no, very good. She just does not cook with any meat or milk products, not even butter. Vegan? Yes, vegan. Back home, there was no such thing as vegan, let alone vegetarian. Meat, potatoes, convenience store food, maybe some Chinese takeout if we wanted to be particularly fancy. I wonder what a vegan meal looks like. I walk back downstairs and into the kitchen. Sally looks up from her frying pan and gives a cheerful wave. It looks like she's cooking some kind of patty. Hello again. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes. Oh, okay. What are you making? Oh, nothing too fancy. I know that most of the people living here are omnivores, so I'm making some good old-fashioned burgers and hot dogs. Burgers and hot dogs? But wouldn't those have... Veggie burgers and soy dogs? Oh. They look and taste just like the real thing. You won't be able to tell the difference. She flashed me a smile so bright that I couldn't possibly doubt her sincerity. I suppose I'll take your word for it. Um, is there anything I can do to help? Oh no, I'm all covered here. You just have a seat and don't worry about a thing. Okay. I go over to the common room dining table and take a seat. Over on the couch, Dominic seems to be giving Rakesh a half-hearted lecture on property rights. Rakesh smiles and nods, but I get the feeling it's not going to stick. I don't see Max yet, but I do hear what sounds like an electric guitar riff from upstairs. Crash. What was that? Hey, is dinner ready yet? Isabella comes down the stairs, fresh from the shower. By which I mean she's wearing nothing but a towel. You get dressed before coming down here. Oh, is little Dominic getting all hot and bothered? At least the guy upstairs appreciated the view. She looks me over. And this girl too. Aren't you the one I bumped into earlier? I... um... Oh god, why am I blushing? Enough! Isabella, put some clothes on. It's a towel, I'm breaking neither house rules nor public decency laws. Face it honey, in a war of escalation, I always win. We'll see about... Dinner is served! Sally bustles out, carrying so many platters it's a wonder she hasn't fallen over. Bugs and hot dogs here, buns here, sweet potato fries and condiments over here. Enjoy! Woohoo, I'm starved. Max comes downstairs, limping a little. Are you okay? Oh yeah, fine, just drop my guitar. No biggie. He winks at Isabella. Maybe I shouldn't ask. We all dig in. Mm. Mm. The texture is... interesting. 
but once you get past that, the taste is okay. Not something I would go out of my way to eat, but okay. I'm gonna order a pizza. I reluctantly agree. You big babies, you barely had a bite each. Oh yeah? If you like it so much, how come your plate's nothing but fries? I'll have some later, I'm just bracing myself. Rakesh pushes his plate aside. Thank you for the meal, I am full. I don't think this is that bad. No, no, they're right. I must not have gotten a good brand. I'll just have to do better next time. She claps her hands. Dominic, make that three pizzas, one with no cheese. It'll be my treat this time. And so it came to pass that my first meal on campus was delivery. Almost everyone inside this house is incredibly lively, even Sally, despite her whole meditation thing. But even in the midst of these strong personalities, I don't feel uncomfortable. Maybe this will work out for the best. For as long as I can remember, I've had this recurring dream where I hit an alarm clock over and over again until it stops. The strangest thing about it is, it always happens just before I have to get up. I bolt upright and look to my left. Oh, no, 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 no. 10.28, I have two minutes to get to class. I flit around my room in a frenzy. Socks, where are my socks? There's my book bag, but where are my notebooks? Are they under the yarn? Wait, no, I put them under my bed because there wasn't enough space. Ah! I finally find everything I need, put on my nice jacket and race downstairs. I've never done well without breakfast, but I can afford to waste time on toast. I should really get... I spot someone standing stock still in front of one of the common room walls. Is that... Rakesh? I suppose he must not have had any morning classes. Rakesh's normally sleepy gaze is sharpened, laser-like, onto some point in the wall. It's a little intimidating. I haven't seen anyone with such preternatural forces since my uncle's last hunting trip. Um, are you... Shh! He frowns. And um, look at that wall and tell me what is missing. It's a blank wall. Decoration? Life. There is no movement, no beautiful play of colour, not even the cobweb of a lonely spider. Only starkness. His accent seems to have slipped into Russian, not sure how that one happened. It begs me to hedge its potential, but in how? I'm sure this is all very fascinating, but I need to go. I start for the door. Wait! I have it, Dan. We must find a hacksaw. We will carve loneliness into this barren thunder. Please, I have to get to... Are you suggesting we saw through the wall? Rakesh pauses, and then gives a decisive nod. Yes! It is the only way. Oh my god, this is what he meant when he mentioned getting taken over by inspiration. I didn't think it was this bad. I am so, so late and I shouldn't miss my first class. But what if he really does go through with it? I... Okay. Go to class, not your problem. I really don't want to make a bad impression on my English professor on the first day. And even if Rakesh did find a hacksaw, I doubt he would go through with it. Or I hope he wouldn't go through with it. No, 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 don't overthink. Sorry, I, I can't help you. I flee before Rakesh ropes me into his crazy scheme. And to think, I saw him as one of the more reasonable people around here. Yeah, that that's slightly on the side of nuts. Finally, lunchtime. The syllabi were straightforward enough. Luckily, the homework assignments won't be nearly as frequent as in high school, and they only make up a small portion of our grade compared to exams and final papers. College allows for a lot more free time than high school, all in all. Unfortunately, my scholarships aren't going to cover much more than books, than school books and board. If I want to be anything other than a crazy hermit, I think it's in my best interest to find a job. I think I'll check out my options after I get something to eat. I decide to grab a bite at the, coffee, at the cafe on campus. I didn't pay for a meal plan, so there's no point going to the cafeteria when the, when the cafe food's probably better. Hey, welcome to Laguna Franca. Oh ho ho, this is interesting. If it isn't the cutie I bumped into earlier. We do have a habit of running into each other, huh? Cutie? You're adorable! I could have a lot of fun corrupting you. I'm just kidding, you're fun to tease. And, right? Um, yes. You look hungry. How would you like a meatball sub? That sounds good. Alright then, one meatball sub coming right up. Thanks. Um, how much? Ah, na 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 na. What kind of housemate would I be if you made pay to, if you made you pay for your lunch on the first day of school? 
You can have it gratis, just don't tell the manager, okay? Thank you. Isabella winks at me and goes back behind the counter to assemble my sandwich. She's much nicer than first impressions led me to believe. I wouldn't mind working here with her. Here you go, Hunt. Meatball sub is perfectly wrapped. I suppose she's been working here for a while. Hey, excuse me? Hmm? Do you... Would you happen to know where I would be able to find work? Work? There are all kinds of jobs available on campus. That guy started at the cafeteria my freshman year. I mean, it's one of the worst jobs on campus. High pressure, fast paced, and the people are crazy. The only good thing about it is even a monkey could do it. Most of the jobs open to freshmen are like that, though. If you want to get it on something worth your while, you need to show your skills. They won't even look at you twice. For instance, this job? You think all you need to do is look good in a uniform, but people come in with crazy orders all the time. You need to be a spontaneous. You need to be spontaneous enough to adapt to the customers. Like if they want a marinara sauce on the meatball sub, and we don't have it, fast talk them into settling for ketchup. That kind of thing. I think most of the jobs on campus and in town get posted online. You can look the qualifications up too. All right. How do I get qualifications? Well, you want it fast and dirty, or slow and steady. Um, both? I'd like to know my options, I guess. Okay. Now, you'll probably be spending most of your time during the day at classes and learning. And since How to Be a Better Short Order Chef hasn't been a class in this school since it was a technical college, you're going to have to look for things to do. Just working a job is going to make you better at working that sort of thing. Working at the bookstore will get you more organised, for example. It's slower, but you'll make money while you do it. That said, if you check the local blog site, you can find all kinds of things to do outside of school. Since you're my roommate, if you ask nice, I might clue you on something to do around town as well. Pretty please? Well, since you asked so nicely, there's a club downtown with a pretty decently low cover charge, and the rock climbing facility is great for the active climber, if you'd like to try that. It's pretty fun, they're relatively cheap too. Not only can you have some fun, but if you pay attention, you'll pick up some good tips on how to do better at jobs. It's faster, but also tends to cost money. Once you get skilled enough, you can start applying for some advanced jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Hey, don't worry about it. Come back any time, little Anne. I'll be happy to show you the ropes. Okay, so I now get to choose activities for this week. I'm assuming, anyway, so... So, Monday morning... Classroom... Okay, I'm assuming this bit's already done, so I need to look at this bit. So afternoon, I'm currently doing nothing. So in the afternoon, hmm. So if I look at, so if I take a nap, I'm assuming that does nothing. If I do that, it'll tire me out. Yes. Yeah, so that's energy. That's the amount of money I've got. And this is my creative skills. Okay. All right. Dum dee dum dee dum. Ooh. Looking at my timer, this is probably a pretty excellent point to stop this video and I'll jump straight into the next one when I'll you know, go through this and figure out what I'm doing. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next part.